Hello again, my name is Damian Ball and we're at the College of Engineering 18th Annual Design Expo. Today I'm joined by Sean Brady and Jennifer Eugenio who are going to talk a bit about their project. Sean, would you mind starting? Absolutely, thanks Damian. Our design project was for St. Gertrude Monastery in Cottonwood, Idaho. Uh, currently, uh, St. Gertrude has a pipeline system that conveys water from a spring on their property to two cisterns that are used for fire suppression and water irrigation. Our design project involved us redesigning the pipeline system because of pressures that were uh, influencing uh, pipe breaking and all that sort of stuff. We decided to go with an HDPE pipe that was uh, used to help with the pressures. Our secondary goal was to create a turbine system to generate hydroelectric power to harness the uh, potential energy of water falling from a thousand feet. Uh, it uh, turned out to be very cost effective because of the amount of power that they were able to produce. Our third alternative was to uh, explore the idea of geothermal heat energy because they were currently using coal and, and propane to heat the buildings which became pretty cost costly. And what did you find with that? Uh, it was very it was very beneficial to implement this sort of a, a design plan to heat and cool the numerous amount of buildings that they had on site. Excellent. Thanks, Sean. And Jennifer, Sean mentioned a bit about a type of pipe you guys implemented. Could you tell me a bit about that HDPE pipe? Yes, it's a high de density polyethylene pipe and what it is, it's 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 a plastic so it's less corrosive, it'll last longer, it has a really good um, design life to it and it also the pressures that it holds was also very beneficial for this pipeline. Okay, could you describe a bit about the requirements for those pressures? Well, we designed the pipeline and we found that at these locations between right here is where a lot of the elevation drops. So there would be a lot of high pressures found at those points. And because of those high pressures, we needed a very a high density pipe to to kind of contain them. So there's not as much pipe burst as which they were having with the cast iron pipe. Excellent, thank you. And Sean, you talked about power generation at the end of the pipeline. Could you talk a bit about that? Yeah, the, the goal is to create the minimal amount of head loss from the spring to the cisterns. The pipeline was about five miles and we only ended up with about 840 available feet of head. This was a very good uh, design parameter for a Pelton turbine which requires a larger amount of head than flow. Um, we, de uh, we determined that through this uh, available head that we were able to generate about 2.8 to 3.8 kilowatt hours per year, which would yield about uh, 1 point, or, uh, 1900 to uh, $2,700 per year in savings. Excellent. And for those viewers out there who might not know, could you describe head and flow a bit? Head is the elevation drop from the, so from the source to the actual location where it's going to be used. Um, and then uh, the flow rate is just the, the velocity and the volume of the water that is flowing through the pipeline. Excellent, thank you. So Jennifer, can you tell me a bit about what it was like to work with the team that you uh, worked with on this project? Um, our design team consisted of me, Sean, and Lee, who could not make it right now. Um, and it was great. We worked with a lot of industry professionals. We had a lot of contact with different companies trying to come up with our, of our cost and, um, and just our design. And it was a really great experience working with all of them. And I think it would really help us um, to learn more about the industry. Excellent. And Sean, you guys worked with a team outside of the university, uh, obviously St. Gertrude's Monastery. Can you describe what it was like working with that outside uh, group? Uh, they were very helpful. Um, our sponsor was very accommodating to any questions and any help that we had. Uh, he was very helpful in suggesting manufacturers to contact to figure out uh, project details, pipe specifications, and everything and anything under the sun. It was wonderful to talk to uh, such an accommodating sponsor. Excellent. Now, you guys are both civil engineers, correct? Okay. Uh, how do you feel the University of Idaho has prepared you for uh, your position as a civil engineer in the future? Well, this, uh, the ex or this design project helped us uh, take the principles that we've learned in the classroom and the book knowledge and applying it to um, uh, outside applications and actual, you know, actual design projects. That uh, it's a little different when you're, you know, doing uh, situa or you know, fake scenarios in the classroom and kind of, you know. It, it's just a lot, it's a lot different. It, communicating with actual professionals and how to apply the knowledge that you've learned in, in actual design is, is very different. And it's it's uh, the University of Idaho makes a very smooth transition in communicating with uh, our professors and, and making it very easy to to be able to make that transition. Excellent. Well, Sean and Jennifer, thank you very much for having us today. Again, my name is Damian Ball, and we're at the 18th annual College of Engineering Design Expo.